So when I first started to use ZBrush, we learned that the UVs were kind of a little hard to do because um, for some reason, ZBrush really loves loop cuts, and the loop cuts in the U or in the well, what should we say, the grid just absolutely doesn't want to connect, so they keep just going around the model over and over and over again and never taking an end. And the problem with that is that you can't really get clean UV cuts with it. So he taught us that to fix this, you can group mask the areas that you want to UV map. And throughout this video, I have had quite a few problems because UV mapping is one of the most boring things that I know of and I'm not a big fan. I'm starting to get more secure about my UV mapping because I've done it quite a few times now and in the beginning I absolutely didn't understand it at all. And because this is not a tutorial, I'm not going to explain how you do it, but I had quite a few problems along the way. And the first problem that I met was uh, when I was trying to group mask it in ZBrush. Because I didn't know that you could actually group mask them on top of each other. So because I didn't know this, I had an idea that I'll just start separating the bone and the flesh again. So I masked out the bones and made sure that they were pretty okay. I wasn't being too precise about them because uh, when I last did this in another project, I didn't have to be, but then again, that was other details. And I came to soon, or I came later to notice that I did actually have to be kind of precise about it. Um, but the first problem that I ran into was that when I use C remesher, it really got rid of all the details. And naturally, that is what it does, but since I had group masked all the teeth and the eye, and all that, especially the teeth, just disappeared completely. It just became like this uneven line of color or something. So I thought, okay, well this is not gonna work out for the UV mapping of the teeth. And so I went back and I tried to mask everything a little bit differently so that the teeth wouldn't be their own mask layer. And that worked a little better, but I still lost a lot of the detail and I thought, okay, well, I will have to find a way to group everything. And so I asked for some help and my friend, he suggested that I only did the front of the face and I kind of misunderstood him a bit. So I only did the front in one part and it kind of looks like he got a new mask <laughs> on front of his like whole face or whatever. And the lines of the mesh looks pretty okay. It's just a problem with doing that tactic is that you kind of lose a little bit of like the lines in other sections like I didn't have anything covering the uh, teeth anymore so I decided to go back and try to do it again and I added a nose too because I thought well that's kind of it's kind of deep so I feel like I might need to UV map that as well instead of just leaving that on the whole head and as I mentioned it was fine like we had different groups which is our intention so that we can UV map a lot easier but the thing is that if you don't have clean UV cuts where the color changes for the texture you will get kind of like a weird painted effect instead of those harsh clean lines that clearly tell that here here's the bone and here is the muscle and so I asked for some help again for my friend and he said, uh, where are the groups? And I was like, what? I mean, there are two groups, hello? <laughs> like, th this, is, this is not how I was supposed to do it. And then I realized, no, I'm supposed to group everything separately like I had done in the beginning. But instead of grouping them at once by masking half of it and then not masking the other half and then zero meshing it, um, I was supposed to do it differently. And I didn't know you could do this, which is what I mentioned in the beginning, that you can layer the masks. So for what was probably the fourth or fifth time of masking the whole head, I redid it. I decided that I would first separate the skin and bone. And then, which I m didn't mention before, is that before you see remesh so that you lower the poly count of the uh, model that you're modeling, uh, you have to select something like group masks, which is what the group masking is. And you don't 
see Ramesh by using this, you just create a group for the whole grid to like change and kind of add new lines and yeah, it just changes so that it's easier for the program to understand what is supposed to be uh, fixed UVs or just yeah, it just makes our world a lot easier to give the map later. So after I have Grip Boss, the Skin and Bone separately, I decided to go to the smaller details by doing the teeth, Grip Masking that, doing the eyes, Grip Masking that, and making sure that everything had its own group where it was supposed to, so that in the end I would be able to cut out everything perfectly fine. And then finally, I could export the whole mesh into Maya, so I could finally get to you mapping. And I'm saying finally because that meant that I was so much closer to finishing this design that I could finally see the end product, which is always exciting. So when you export into Maya, you want two versions of your head. You want the high poly one and you want the low poly one. And the reason we remesh is because we want a low poly one. Because low poly models are a lot easier to use a map. And some of you are probably going to point out in the comments if you've done 3D modeling or are doing 3D modeling that my model has still way too high poly count for being in low mesh. And I want you to keep in mind that I had this in the back of my head that this is still a lot. So. The first thing that I ran into was that I had forgotten to tweak on the expert settings so the group was still on. We take this off to shortly explain because if you leave it on, uh, your mesh, your high poly mesh is gonna come in with every single poly count number or something like that. It's, it's gonna give you an insane amount of layers inside the program and to combine them in Maya. Even with my PC that I just <laughs> I just renewed, um, it still didn't want to do it because it was so long and so heavy on Maya that in the end it just kept crashing and crashing and crashing. Either way, so since my low poly model still had a pretty high poly count, I decided that the first thing I would do before I bothered to start even mapping it was to cut down on the poly count. And to do that, I decided to cut some edges and just try to make it look even everywhere. But as I did that, I realized that the loop cuts went a lot over the details and I lost a lot of detail in the teeth. And after quite a while with working on it, I decided that this is not worth a problem just for some teeth because the whole wireframe wouldn't look pretty in the end anyway. And I'm kind of a little OCD about that. So I decided that I would lose too much by doing this, like time, and I would just do a lot better if I went back to uh, ZBrush to fix this and export a new version. And by doing that, I had two options. I could actually lower the poly count and see if that worked, or like I decided to do, because I was still too scared of losing too much detail, I decided that I wouldn't mask the teeth separately from the skin or whatever was behind them, like the skeleton part and the muscle. I decided that I would group them together because honestly I could just paint manually over them when I'm texturing. I don't need to UV map them separately just to get that like rough edge on the textures. It's I thought nah it's it's not worth the trouble. So I went back to Seabrush, did what I just said and I imported it back into Maya. And finally I decided that it was time to UV map. And when I did, I started to realize that some of the edges were pretty weird. The mesh had both triangles and some of the edges were just way too tight. And I remember that, well, we do Zoom recordings now because of COVID-19 and because of that, well, not Zoom recordings, they're called Zoom meetings, but our teacher records them so I can just go back and rewatch it. And um, I remember that he showed me a way to relax these edges so that it kind of looks a little prettier because if you have two edges too close to each other it kind of pinches your mesh and i especially had a problem with that when i was doing hard surface modeling uh for a project at school and i wish i knew it then but anyway so to start relaxing the edges of the whole mesh i decided that i would use a tactic and to do that 
you just quickly select your high poly, uh, make it live, and then you go to the modeling toolkit and you press quad draw. And then to relax everything, you just kind of draw over the edges while holding shift and right click. And by doing this, you're just basically smoothing as you would with a brush or the smoothing brush in ZBrush. And this makes the edges not pinch together. It kind of just puts them back in place so there's even spacing in between them. And it's actually quite satisfying when it like, when you fix those pinches everywhere. So I did that for a good hour or two and just enjoying myself, listening to some music, just fixing everything, making it more satisfying. And I went a little back and forth by smoothing or relaxing the edges and fixing the edges because sometimes when you group mask, uh, they don't always connect properly the edges so that you get like this tiny little hole with different faces and it looks like you could just connect them so that it becomes one line instead of two. And so I decided to fix them a little bit all over the mesh and I also bumped into a few triangles. And let me tell you, triangles are so annoying. Both because the program that I'm going to put this into afterwards, the texture, it really absolutely hates triangles. It's just, it won't even let you import it properly if you have any. And um, that happened a few times for me. But before we get to that point, I decided to do the effort to fix them. And to do this, uh, you have two options. You could use cleanup and you could let uh, the program do it for you, but I don't really trust it because that tends to actually make everything into triangles before it fixes it. And then you have to manually do it into quads and it just, it's a mess. I don't like it. But you also can use cleanup to spot what or where those triangles are. They kind of become like a bright orange, like when you normally select faces. And uh, so I used that tool to figure out where the problems were and then I tried to actually make quads instead of triangles. But the problem that I had over and over again was that I didn't have enough supporting lines. So whenever I fixed the triangle, it created another one right next to where I just fixed it. So it was just an endless loop of fixing a triangle but making another one, fixing a triangle, making another one. Sometimes it worked by deleting a loop cut, but other times that would mess it up at the other end of the loop cut, and other times it works to add a loop cut, but then it messed it up again at the other side of the loop cut, so it was just a mess. And so since I already hadn't started on it, or even like I thought about it, but I knew I would have to fix this sooner or later, and what better time is it to do it when you notice a problem instead of trying to find the problem again later. Uh, but I decided to take a break from fixing the triangles and start even mapping. So like I said before, I wanted to separate the pieces that would be flesh and that would be bone. and. I also had a plan that I wanted to like split the whole skull, but the problem there was that I didn't get a straight edge that went straight at the middle. It kind of went straight up and then it went to the side, so it wouldn't be even anyway. Wait, so the next thing that I did was that I made sure the UVs were ready to be packed. And to do this, I usually have like a quick just thing that I do, I always make sure that they have the same resolution, which everyone should do because different resolution compared to the real mesh will make some parts blurry, some parts really not blurry. <laughs> now to put them or pack them together, you have an automatic way and I always use this because, well, it's a lot easier than just packing them yourself. And when everything was finally packed, I decided, okay, let's give it a shot. We're finally done UV mapping. We can just throw it into Substance. And as I export it and import it into Substance, the program doesn't want to take them because I have triangles. Yes. It's not like I forgot about them. I actually thought that maybe I had done enough of them to fix it, but I also hadn't gone through the whole list of the cleanup setting uh, so that I still had a few more things that I needed to fix except for or other than triangles and after a few more minutes or I don't know how long it took, I think it took an hour maybe, 
I finally decided to try and import it again to Substance and I finally actually wanted to take it. And that was like hallelujah at the point because I had spent hours just you mapping and when I started you mapping I was also kind of in this mindset that oh, okay I just need to you map it it's like the easiest thing like it's it's I mean it's pretty simple it's it's just cutting and like packing it and going into substance and that's it and obviously I had to jinx it but enough about that I finally got it imported and I'm not like 100% satisfied with the cuts, but it's gonna do. I mean, since it's not a school project, I'm not gonna get slaughtered by my teacher. <laughs> not that he slaughters me, he's a really cool guy, okay? Uh, but I mean, some of you might slaughter me for this, but I'm just happy that I managed to finally import it into Substance Painter. And now I can finally go to the last part of the project, which is texturing it and rendering it. So stick along for the next video.